All right, let's start. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, if you're here in Calgary and good afternoon and good evening to you, it depends upon where you're in the world right now. Um, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the University of Calgary's um, International Student Finance uh, webinar. My name is uh, Jeff Saini and I'm gonna be the host today for today's webinar. And I'm the International Student Advisor at the Office of the Registrar, uh, particularly Enrollment Services team. And my co-host is Jae-Un Lee. She's an advisor with the international team, uh, specifically the International Student Transition Support Team. Um, she advises um, students with their transition here in Canada. Um, she coordinates the international um, events. And particularly for me, um, I handle the um, student uh, fee assessments for the uh, um, the group study programs, international exchange programs, and all sorts of things that's related to the um, international students piece. I, I advise on that. And for the today's uh, webinar, before we start with the presentation, I just want to let everybody know that this webinar is being recorded and the recordings will be uh, posted on the university website and the presentation uh, will be shared as well uh, so that you guys can look at the information after if you need it. Uh, So, uh, yeah, in this session, uh, we're going to be sharing the uh, different payment methods um, that's available for the international students to pay their fees and their processing times. And once they have paid their tuition, how they can um, use their student centers to pay, uh, to print the payment receipts and how they can print their confirmation of registration letters that they, that they can use for the renewable of their study permits um, to release funds and how can they submit a service request that can help their change their status from international to a domestic student that directly affects their fees. Um, and then after that, we have the third party sponsorship application, how they can submit an application for that. So by this, we mean it's like, say, if you're sponsored by a company or by a government agency and they're paying their tuition, um, on your behalf, how you can let us know that they're doing it so that we can get the tuition from them. And then I'm going to share um, some info on the international student scholarships and awards that's um, available. And then at the end, I'm going to share the Money Smart. That's our financial literacy program. So if you need help with the budgeting, uh, financial planning, that's the resource, a great resource available for all the students. It doesn't matter whether it's international or domestic, you can take the help from the experts. Uh, and before we start the presentation, this is something that we do here in um, Canada, is we acknowledge the um, Indigenous people, their land and their history who have lived on this land a thousand years ago before the colonizers stepped uh, foot on this land. So I would like to start uh, by acknowledging the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, uh, comprising the Sexica, Pikani, Kainai First Nation, as well as the Satina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, included the Shiniki, uh, Bearspaw, Wesley First Nation. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. All right, let's start. So the different payment methods that we have here for the international students are the online, uh, Canadian online banking transfers. So if you're already here in Canada and then you have opened a bank account here in Canada as well, you can pay the tuition directly from your Canadian bank account. This is the fastest method um, to pay your tuition. And it only, once you initiate the transfer from your bank to your university account, it only takes about three to five uh, business days. Uh, that's the standard processing time. So uh, just if you don't have an international banking account, there are other options that's available for the international students. Um, the second one is the CIBC um, student pay. Um, and then the Western Union uh, Global Pay. So students can uh, make uh, the payments using these two methods if they can do a bank wire transfer or if they have a master visa, uh, MasterCard or they have a Visa credit or a debit card, they can use those debit card to make the payments for their tuition. Uh, the processing time, which is really important, um, is higher than the Canadian online banking transfer. It, it takes at least two weeks for us to receive the payment. So if you initiate the payment, using the CIBC um, student pay method or the Western Union uh, global pay method. Um, the, uh, 
these companies, they will take their own processing time. And once the payment reaches to us, then we take our own processing time uh, to post the uh, tuition payments on your account. Um, so it is really, uh, you have to be really mindful when you're paying your tuition is you have to pay the tuition before the um, term fee deadline. So say, for example, if you're starting in the fall semester that starts in September, um, and then uh, there will be a deadline at the end of the month. Um, so if the deadline here, for example, is the 29th of September, students are advised uh, to pay their tuition before the term fee deadline so that there are no holds on their account that can prevent them from registration and using other services that's available on the student center. So just be mindful when you're paying your tuition, be mindful of these processing times um, listed on our website and then choose the best payment uh, that's the right one for you. Um, and this presentation, so this presentation will be posted on the website as well. And I have the um, links at the bottom of this presentation, which you guys can use to, um, to see all of this information that's posted on our website as well. Um, and then I'm going to talk more about the CIB, uh, sorry, Western Union Global Pay Method. So yeah, again, if you don't have a Canadian bank account, there are pretty simple steps. Um, you can use the Western Union Global Pay to pay your tuition. So what students can do in first step is to access the um, access the portal um, using the link given on our website and then the next part is you have to choose where you're sending the payment from so for example if you're sending a payment from china you have the origin country china and then after that um, you will see different options you will see the tuition payment you will see if you're paying the admissions deposit or if you're paying residence fee so depending upon what kind of uh, fees you're paying you will select the option and enter the amount and then once you click on the next page, you will see um, different amounts listed. So uh, the bank to bank uh, transfer will have a different exchange rate uh, as compared to if you're paying with a Visa credit or debit card or a master credit or debit card. So it depends upon what your choice of option to pay the fees. Um, you will select that option. You will enter your, all your details, your student ID number, and then you will complete the payment. And the same, exact same options is available in the CIBC student pay method. So um, the process is completely the same It's just different companies. So you can choose um, uh, the company which has a better exchange rate so that you can save a little bit of money if you're sending payments from a different country to Canada. Um, same thing, you will access the CIBC student portal um, online. You will select what kind of tuition you are paying. You will select where you're paying from, and then you will choose the bank to bank transfer or credit card and then you will complete the payment. Again, bank to bank wide transfer, it will take at least two weeks and then credit cards are always faster, three to five business days uh, for processing the payments. Uh, the next part of the presentation is how to print your payments routine. So um, closer, uh, when, when students start applying for their program and they have paid their tuition, we receive a high volume of emails where students asking us is how I can print my payment receipt. So you can, um, at the time, if you're international students, right, at the time of applying for your visa, you need to submit a uh, payment receipt that you have paid your tuition to the IRCC. So students can um, do it directly from their student center. So once you have made the payment and we have received the payment as it's posted on your account, what you can do is basically uh, you will log into your student portal using your student ID and password. Um, the link is right there. It's HTTPS at my.ucalgary.ca. You will enter your student ID and your preferred password. And then you will see on the left-hand side, this is the screenshot of the student center uh, that we have available for you. And you will click on the My Financial um, section in here. And after clicking on the My Financial section, you will see the receipts option. Once you click on it, on the right-hand side, the screenshot will show the payment history. So if you have made multiple payments, it will list all the payments that you have done with the um, University of Calgary. And then once you're on this page, uh, you will click on the view part. So what view will do is it will open a new window and it will have a PDF copy of your receipt, which you can um, download and submit it to the IRCC. Um, and sometimes what happens is if you click on view, the windows doesn't open up. Um, it's usually a browser issue. So make sure you enable the pop-ups in your uh, browser. So once you click on view, it usually asks you for that. So make sure you enable that. And once you click on the view, you will be able to view the PDF copy of your receipt. Um, this information is posted on the website as well. So if you click on the this link right here at the bottom of the screen, it's an how-to guide. 
um, this will yeah this will take you exactly to the how to guide page where we have listed all the steps that you need um, to follow in order to download your receipts. And the next portion of our website is the confirmation of registration letters. So especially for the international students, say you're in your program, you're enrolled here, you're here in Calgary, you're studying, right? And then maybe your study permit um, needs a renewal, your study permit is expiring. So what you can do is, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the main thing that you have to do is, you have to download a confirmation of registration letter uh, that states that, that states your name that this student is enrolled in a certain program he's enrolled for the fall uh, that's usually from september to december and uh, or for the winter term that's from january to april usually so um yeah your confirmation of registration letter it states your name as um, shown in the presentation it will have your student id it will have your date of birth it will have the program um, that you registered in. So say if you're in an engineering program, it will state that. It will also um, state uh, what terms you're registered in. So say if you have a timetable already for your fall program and you registered in courses for the winter um, term as well, it will list the starting date and the ending date of the term. And then it will also, stat it will also uh, mention your status. So whether you registered as a full-time student or you registered as a part-time student, um, how to download these uh, registration letters, uh, we have the guide available on the website as well. So you can use this link to access that guide, but it's pretty simple what all you have to do. So this is available in the student center as well. So what you can do is basically, you can log in into your student center again, you will see this option on the top of my financial. So there's an option that says program and advising info. And then after that, you will click on the confirmation of registration letter. And once you're on this page, it will ask you, what do you need it for? If you need it for the study permit, you will choose that option and you will choose the terms and then you will hit download and it will print an official copy, uh, which you can save it as a PDF and submit it to the IRCC for your study permit approval. Or say, for example, if you have an education loan or something, and if a and the loan is paying your tuition, you can also use these confirmation of registration letters to send it to your bank so that they can know that you have registered for your courses and um, and then they can um, release your uh, payment uh, or the tuition. And also, if uh, you are sponsored, say you're working for a company and you're sponsored by them or uh, a government agency is paying for your tuition, usually they ask, for the um, confirmation of registration letters as well. So you can submit these letters um, to them as well, and then they can release your fund. Um, the next part is um, change slash update your residency status. So what this means, this is very interesting thing. So say for example, um, you're enrolled at the University of Calgary, right? And then your status is changes from international um, to a domestic student, or say you, um, your parents, um, they are diplomats to Canada, or say, for example, you were on a refugee status. Um, so, um, you applied for a refugee status, and your status is determined by IRCC, and they're saying, yes, you are um, a permanent refugee now. Um, so what you can basically do is you can submit a service request um, um, through your student center. And then what you have to do is basically upload, upload your documents as a proof. So say, for example, if you're if you're a permanent resident now, you can submit your PR card or your confirmation of permanent resident information so that your status will be changed from international to domestic. How this affects your fees is basically once your status is changed from international to a domestic student, your tuition will be changed from an international to a domestic student as well. So this is really important. And um, say you're enrolled in a fall term, that's from September to December. and um, you get the decision in those time. And as long as you submit it before the term fee deadline, that's usually the day, uh, the last day to pay your tuition. So as long as you pay your tuition, sorry, as long as you pay your, uh, as long as you submit your service request before that deadline, um, your tuition will be changed. If we receive the request after the term fee deadline, um, then your status will be changed to a domestic student uh, for the future terms. That is the winter term, spring and summer term. Um, so service request is a really unique option that we offer to all the students. And this, uh, by submitting a service request, um, students can do a lot of things. So say for example, if you've made a payment and the payment is not 
post, uh, posted on your account. Uh, what you can do is you can also submit a service request through Student um, Center um, asking us to check where the payment has been and how long it's going to take. Or um, if you uh, mail the check um, to pay your tuition and it's been a long time and the check is not posted on your student account, um, you can submit a payment trace to see uh, where the check is or how long it's going to take. And you can also make changes um, to your student records. So service request is like your best option here um, to get your inquiries resolved or any, any kind of issues that you have um, here at the University of Calgary, you can submit a service request and it will be resolved. The best part of it, uh, you can actually see the status of your service request in your student center as well. And again, yes, how to change your residency status, the how-to guide is posted on our website as well, so students can access this information on the website as well. Um, the next part, uh, yes, yeah. so the third-party sponsorship. Again, as mentioned before, um, say if any kind of government agency is paying for your tuition, um, or is it a private company uh, paying for your tuition, you will be eligible for a third-party sponsorship. Uh, make sure uh, the parents or any other relatives, if they are paying for your tuition, uh, they are not considered a third-party sponsorship. So it has to be either a government agency or a company um, that, that's paying your tuition in full. Uh, there, there are a few steps that you need to uh, complete every semester. So this is a every semester or every term application. So say, for example, um, if the agency is um, covering you for the fall semester, what you have to do is basically you have to get a, a letter from the company. Um, the letter has to be on the company's letterhead. It has to include your student name, your student ID number, and the term that they are sponsoring you for. So say, for example, if they are sponsoring you for the fall term, it has to be mentioned that the student is sponsored for the fall 2022 term. And then it should also list if, say, for example, they are not covering any, any books um, or they're not covering your residence fees in here, then they should mention that thing on the website as well. So once you have this official looking letter, uh, what you have to do is basically again, submit uh, a service request and, and you have to do it before the last day to pay your tuition. Once we receive your um, service request, we'll look at the letter, whether it meets the requirements or not. And then once the letter is met, uh, we will approve your application and then um, the finance team, they will issue an invoice um, to the sponsoring company um, so that they can pay your tuition. So if you're sponsored for the whole program, say you're enrolled in 2022, and then you're uh, sponsored for the whole program, you have to submit this application every term to your student center. Um, if your letter states that um, you're covered for the whole program, you can submit the same letter again and again every term. You don't have to get a new letter. Uh, all the information that's posted for the students as well as the sponsor, it's listed on our website as well. And the links are posted at the bottom so you can access this link. Um, and yeah, you can view this information directly on the website. And if um, your sponsored company, they don't have any kind of template or anything, or you need to send them an example of what kind of letter uh, you need, um, you can also use this template given on the website. And then uh, we've also posted uh, instructions for students on how to submit the service request for third-party sponsorship. Uh, so you can access this um, file right through this link right here. And the next part is, yeah. So this is an example of the sponsorship letter that we received from a student. Uh, so you will see a couple of things in here. Um, it states the student name in here. It states what program they are in. Um, it has the student ID in here as well. So this, um, it states that the student is sponsored for the spring and the summer term. Um, and then it has their contact information on here as well. And then this part right here is it's saying that they don't cover the health and dental insurance. Um, and it also has the address of the uh, sponsored company and their name right here. And this is their logo. So this is an official looking letter that's on the company's letterhead. And, has all the information that we need in order to approve your third-party sponsorship application. And the next part, yes. So opening a Canadian bank account. So if you're here in Canada on a short term um, or you do not plan to work here in Canada, then you basically don't need um, a bank account here in Canada. But if you're planning on working here and need 
do you need to pay for your living cost or do you need to pay for your tuition that um, it's really important that you open a Canadian bank account. Uh, a couple of more things in here as well. Say, for example, um, you have paid your tuition and you overpaid your tuition. Say you're supposed to pay like $8,000, but you paid $9,000 and um, you need to get a refund. Um, if you have a Canadian bank account, then it's going to be faster uh, for us to process the refund for the over uh, overpayment rather than if you don't have a Canadian bank account and we need to send uh, money internationally, then obviously it's going to take uh, a lot of uh, processing time, usually more than two weeks. But if you have a bank account in here, we need to send you a payment, then it's always less than that. Or if you want a scholarship or award at the U Calgary, then and we need to send the money to your bank account, then um, what you will do is you will submit all the information of your bank account in um, through your student center, and then we can send you uh, money directly uh, if you want a scholarship or award. A uh, couple of things to note um, when, when you're opening a bank account. So uh, there are major banking institutions in here. One RBC, that's called Bank of Canada, um, TD, CIBC. So these are different uh, banking institutions. So it depends upon uh, if they charge a fee to open account or they charge a monthly fee and depending upon what kind of services or the promotions they have to offer. So keeping in mind all of these things, uh, you will open a bank account here in Canada, and then the documents that you need uh, to open a bank account is um, your two ID proof, that's your passport, or it can be your birth certificate. Um, second piece, it can be your study permit uh, that's going to be issued by IRCC. Um, and the money you would like to deposit, and you can also take your U, uh, U Calgary student ID card. So all of these docu documents will be sufficient for you to open a bank account. Again, um, the information is posted on the website as well, and the link is right at the bottom. And that's all about opening a Canadian bank account. If we go next, yes. So these are the uh, international scholarships and awards. Um, so UCalgary provides tons and tons of um, scholarships and awards uh, that the international students can apply for. And searching for these awards, is, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, first, it's all also available um, through your student centers. So if you log in into your student center and you click on My Financials, it will list all the upcoming um, awards and scholarships that you're eligible for. And then it will have the um, opening of the scholarship date when you can submit the application for that and all the other important details that you need to know about the scholarships, just like how to apply for that particular scholarship. Um, if you want to search it on the website, um, you can do so. Uh, the link is posted. Uh, right at the bottom, uh, or you can search it on the website as well. So if you click um, search for like search for awards, and then uh, once you're on that particular page, you will see different options. So the scholarships can be available to you depending upon what program you're enrolled in, your status here in Canada. So if you're an international student, uh, you can select international, and then it will list all the awards that's available for your program and your status here in Canada. And then one, you will see different scholarships in it and you will click on the individual scholarships and you will see the requirements that whatever you need to submit for that particular award, and then you can apply for it. And, and I highly, highly, highly recommend um, all these students to apply for these scholarships and award. Even um, right now, you can go and search on the website and see uh, all the upcoming scholarships that you are eligible for and start applying right now. And the next part is, yes. So the last part uh, we want to talk about is the Money Smart program. Uh, that's our financial literacy program, as I mentioned before. So if you're someone like me who needed some help um, during a student time uh, with the budgeting, or you need help with the money saving strategies, or you need a financial planning overall for your program and for your time here in Canada, um, you can access these uh, workshops and webinars um, through registering through our website or we also offer one-to-one uh, -one financial planning uh, with the experts. So experts are there um, and they can do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, financial planning session with you where they can explain. So based on uh, the funds you have on in your account and the time you're spending working in here and then studying in here and managing, that can be really, really, really um, difficult. So if you need help with all those uh, things, you can definitely access uh, the Money Smart information directly on our website, and then you can register for all the upcoming uh, workshops and webinars. And 
that's the end of our presentation. So this is the um, contact information uh, for my department. Uh, we're right now in the McKemi Tower, um, room MT116. So you can always uh, visit us there Monday to Friday uh, from 9 to 4 p.m. Um, and we're here to help you. Um, second thing to contact us is you can submit a service requests using your student center. Um, you can also reach out to us via phone. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have a free international calling number. So, uh, but if you're here in Canada, you can dial this number or you can use this toll-free uh, toll number if you're from the US and then you can contact us. And the last option is if you can't um, call us or if you can't submit a service request, you can book an in-person or a Zoom advising appointment um, through this link right here. It's also uh, given on the contact us page, uh, the different ways to connect us. So you can use this link um, to book an in-person advising or a virtual Zoom appointment even right now uh, with us as well. All you have to do is just visit this contact us link and the second contact information for uh, my colleague at the international, um, international team. Um, so this is their link, um, contact us right here. Um, they are in the Mackeyman Student Center uh, room MSC 275. And if you have any general questions or a non-immigration related questions, then you can always contact them via email at iss at ucalgary.ca. Um, if you have any specific immigration related inquiries that can only be answered uh, by a certified immigration specialist, then you can contact them at issimmigration at ucalgary.ca. Uh, they also offer um, the drop-in advising appointments on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So you can visit uh, the McEwen Student Center if you're here in uh, Calgary, and then uh, you, can, you can talk to them about your problems. And then you can also connect them uh, via Instagram. So at QCalgaryISS. Um, and if you wanna see all the upcoming events that's being hosted by the international team, um, you can go on this link right here or you can search it on the website as well. And then you can see all the upcoming as well as the past webinars or any kind of um, events that's, uh, that was hosted by the uh, International